All right, everybody. Um, good morning. Thank you for uh, uh, thank you for watching this video or attending uh, this workshop about the uh, data management plan and dmptour.org, which is an important component of the research data services uh, provided by the Cook Library. And uh, first of all, this is about me. My name is Song Yao Chen, and I am um, the data science librarian here at Cook Library. And here is my um, contact information as Chen at Towson.edu. And here's my um, office phone number 410-704-5169. And uh, please feel free to shoot me uh, with email or call me uh, in office. Uh, I personally prefer to uh, read an email because uh, I will re respond to uh, any of my emails as soon as possible. Um, most of them, uh, most of them within uh, 24 hours. So this is the uh, agenda that I'm going to talk in this workshop today. First of all, I'm going to briefly introduce uh, data management like uh, what is data management? Um, what kind of uh, questions that, uh, or like uh, what you would like to um, have this kind of uh, uh, services when you're facing the, the, the situation, such kind of a situation you're facing. And then um, dmptour.org, which is a very good tool for everybody who want to compose a data management plan for any kind of uh, grant proposals for any for any funders and then a little bit brief uh, introduction of the whole research data services uh, provided by cook library first of all Mm, what kind of uh, like uh, what kind of a question you're facing when the, you might want to approach to me to find out this this kind of uh, data management plan services? First of all, I am composing a grant proposal, or I don't have time to read through all the data management data management plan requirements documents from any front of the funder or I don't have enough time to compose the data management for my grant proposal, or I don't have enough time to review the data management plan composed by any of the con uh, contributors or collaborators in my study team. Or could someone tell me what a data management plan is? Or could someone tell me how to compose the data management plan, etc. So. When this, when these questions um, are there, and uh, or if you have any of these kind of questions, please don't hesitate to contact me, and um, I will more than happy to give you suggestions and supports related to this kind of uh, services, data management plan related services. And first of all, briefly, introduction of a data management plan. So what is a data management plan? Data management plan, a data management plan is a formal document that outlines what you will do with your data during and after a research project. Most researchers collect the data with some form of plan in mind, but it's often inadequately documented and incompletely thought out. Many data management issues can be handled easily or avoided entirely by planning ahead. With the right process and framework, it doesn't take too long and can pay off enormously in the long run. And this paragraph actually is from the uh, the help 
the help file provided by dmp2.org, which you can access to uh, by clicking the links that I have included in this presentation file. And of course, this in, in presentation file will be shared with all of you afterwards. Well, in another word, data management plan is a form of documented like showed in this slide require a required section of the grant proposals by most of the funders. And the link here, funder requirements, include a re will, will lead you to um, the web page that include all, almost all of the requirement documents from the funders. And that, of course, that page is, is from dmp2.org. But let's briefly talking about, in general, what parts are required in a data management plan? Well, after reading a lot of requirement documents from a lot of funders, I can say I, I have summarized this in this slide to talk about like in a standard data management plan in general. These are the five parts or the five components uh, that are required in a data management plan. For example, like, not for example, like it shows, first of all, data types. It's more like what kind of uh, data types you're, you're planning to use uh, for the research data sets created or curated from your study project. And number two, what kind of a standard or metadata scheme or metadata standard that you are planning to use for the research data sets uh, created or curated from your study uh, project? And number three, how do you plan to manage the accessibility of the research data sets created from your study project? And number four, how do you plan with to uh, share your data sets um, created or curated from your study project. And number five, of course, this is about um, store or uh, preservation of the research data sets. How do you plan to store or um, preserve, or like I said, some like somebody else um, says said uh, to archive the research data sets created or curated from your study a project. And of course, these research data sets are not all, like all of the research data sets cre created from your study project. This is something that you're going to talk in this data management plan in part of data sharing and or data access. It, it's, like, it's like what part or which part or what parts of the research data sets that you are planning to share in public, something like that. And of course, a data management plan um, can be easily composed by dmptool.org, which is a step-by-step -step, uh, wizardry-like standardized uh, online tool for anyone to compose a standard data management plan. And uh, the content in this page um, is for your later reference. All of this um, links can be clicked. And uh, I take this as an example uh, to tell you about the data management plan or for the grant proposals um, for NIH, the DMSP, Data Management and Sharing Plan. And by clicking that, you can find that the official documents are issued by NIH talking about like uh, what kind of a research uh, project uh, covered by this uh, data management and sharing policy and uh, what kind of elements should be included in the DMSP um, required by NIH and suggested data repository selections um, by N NIH. And of course, there is a, a blank NIH DMP format um, and some examples 
uh, that that with the NIH on dmp2.org. And of course, like I said, specifically uh, by NIH, first of all, the the one the, the first elements that should be included in the data management and sharing plan uh, required by NIH is data type, like I said before. And number two, some related tools, software and code. And number three, the standards of the research data sets or the metadata scheme or metadata standards that you're going to include. And then uh, your plan of uh, to preserve the data, access to the, the, the data sets and yeah, uh, NIH require you to briefly enclose uh, your associated timelines of the data preservation and data access. And then number four, access distribution or reuse considerations. And finally, the, the oversight of data management and sharing. I know um, some of them are, some of them look vague uh, by just uh, listing um, the bullet points, but all of these points uh, can be, will be explained and enclosed in the dmptour.org. I will show you later. And this is something that um, I have uh, found out from the NIH.gov. Um, it's just for your reference, something that you need to consider when you are um, uh, considering to compose, how to compose your data management and sharing plan. And of course, this is some tip uh, recommended by the, the NIH.gov that please consider consulting institutional resources such as librarians and data managers to help plan effectively. And this, this is data dmptool.org that, uh, that I'm going to show you how to use it. And first of all, uh, the link in this page can be clicked, of course, and uh, the research guide or the dmptool.org part in the research guide of data that, um, that, I, that I composed for you. And by the way, I wanted to tell you in this research guide data, a lot of resources, not only about the data management plan and the mptor.org, but also something more about uh, data visualization, data analysis, or and, and data sets, data repository, et cetera, is, are included in this guide. And I personally think and encourage you encourage you to read through the research guide. Uh, you may find something helpful and useful uh, either for your research or for your classes. And of course, if you want to learn more about other components of the research and data re uh, research data services, um, feel free to contact me and I'm happy to um, talk with you in some kind of a consultation session or something like that. And uh, the other um, points in this in, 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 in this page is that first of all, dmptour.org can be uh, like a, you can sign in dmptour.org using your TU profile or TU email uh, without any extra registration steps. And this is this is a step-by-step -step wizard tool for you to compose a data management plan. And also there are some kind of um, extra uh, resources that you can use to record or take some notes for your um, research project. And of course you can download your uh, data management plan in multiple formats. Um, DOCX or PDF, and I personally recommend you to download it in DOCX so you can adjust um, the format, the content, anything in Microsoft Word. So right now, I'm going to, I'm going out to the dmptour.org by click this link. And let me share this. Uh, 
Okay. So, uh, well, as you can see, this is the page after I have signed in on dmptour.org with my Towson University email. To show you uh, from the very beginning, I'm going to sign this out. And this is the page uh, that you are going to see right after you click that link in, the, in, in that page. And of course, you can still go to the dmptour.org by click, either by click the link in the, like I said, In my research guide, or you can you can just uh, directly um, key in dmptour.org uh, in the in in that uh, URL field of Chrome or any uh, other um, explorer that you were using. So let's sign in this with my own TU email address, and uh, after you key in your email address, you click continue. And then you can sign in with institution SSO. And of course, I have signed in my SSO. So it directly go to this uh, dashboard page. And of course, um, you may have to um, key in your TU uh, username and the password. And sometimes there will be a um, another um, extra um, authentication step like uh, using the uh, application on your phone or, or something like that, but uh, we'll skip that part. So this is the dashboard that, that I am using, uh, the, 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 the dashboard of your dmptour.org profile in which all of the data management plan you have composed will be showed here, including those were used or have been used for practicing or mock, like you can see, as you can see, I have a lot of test project or mock project in my dashboard. So let's let's go to uh, let, let's uh, go through the dmptour.org by the sections. My dashboard, create plan, funder requirements, public DMPs, and help. So first of all, I'm going to talk about this part, create plan later. So let's begin with funder requirements. So in this part, dmptour.org lists all of the, yeah, maybe not all, but most of the requirement documents related to data management plan here. So as, as you can see, we have five pages. In total, so if you wanted to search the requirements document of some funders, you can just key in the name of that funder, for example, NIH. You can just key in NIH instead of National Institute of Health. You can just key in NIH and click search. And then all of the, 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 the documents related to NIH will be listed here. As you can see, we have four results, NIH default, DMSP, NIH FDP pilot template, FDP pilot template, Bravo, and National Institute of Mental Health is listed as well. And here in the download column listed, as you can see, opens a new window. If you're looking at the down left, it's it's a template. So if you click, if you click here, opens a new window. Well, this is a word file, so it automatically downloaded a word file. So let's oh, let's click the PDF file so you can see what it is, what it is, what it looks like. So this is a PDF template for, what's this? An NIH default DMSP. It just looks, looks like this for your reference. And this is the funder link, final NIH policy for data management and sharing and research covered under the data management and sharing and sample plans here 
all the link you can you can click for your reference. And by the way, most of the link, links here has been included in the slide that I that I just show you. And if you don't want to click in this page, you're you're more than welcome to click the links um, in my presentation file as well. So of course you can of course you can key NSF as well, and all of the NSF documents will be listed here. And as you can see, this is a shortcut for you to go to the section of create plan using this template based on from, from this section as well. So, and after uh, we have uh, gone through briefly uh, this section from the requirements, let's go to this section, public DMP. So by clicking the public DMP, all of the public data management plans will be listed here. So before I show you any of this, any of these, I would like to emphasize something. Uh, the only, the most important thing about the data management plan or the public data management plans listed here is the only reason those plans are listed here is the author wanted to show them or wanted to make it public. In another word, the plans, uh, the plans uh, listing here doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean it is a good plan. It doesn't mean it is a bad plan. It doesn't mean these plans are accepted by the funder. It doesn't mean the grant proposals with the state management plan are, accept, are accepted by the funders. It doesn't mean anything else. Like I said, it is only because the author decided to show their data management plan in public. So therefore, these data management plan or public data management plans are only for your reference. I mean, only. It's like you can download it and read it and maybe think about it like uh, a how, why or how they put those content into different sections of a data management plan. But it doesn't mean that if you follow the mode in any of this data management plan, the data management plan will be accepted by the funders. No, no, You're, it is not guaranteed. So. After I emphasize this, let's just click one of this. So the first of all, you, you, you can sort it, you can sort by maybe most recent. And the most recent one is a plan using the template of NIH default DMSP template. And um, these are some brief information. And of course, by on the left bar, you can filter out or search in the public plans as well. And uh, I have key in NIH and click uh, this button and all of the NIH related and data management plan will be listed here. And of course you can look at or filter by either by funder, we have uh, seven funders in total here. All of them are related to NIH and or, well, or by institutions. We have 50 institutions in total listed here. And of course, if there are in, in different languages, Spanish or English or, or different subject, it, it will be listed here as well. So. Let's click the first one, membrane cyt cytoskeleton interactions in, in, in platelets and the mega, and mega karyokites. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not good at reading these words, but uh, let's just look at what it's, what uh, the 
data management plan for NIH looks like. So as you can see, this is the plan overview. We have this um, brief information listed uh, at the very first of a plan. And uh, you might have noticed that th there is a DOI link for this data management plan. This is a very interesting, and I think this is a very good um, updates and the feature uh, provided by the mptour.org. We can talk about it later, but as you can see, um, yes, a data management plan can be assigned a persistent ID, which can be used in the academic profile or, or any other possible uh, places like reference list or, 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 or citation or something like that. And, and yes, it can be cited using this. And this is uh, the creator. And uh, apparently, um, this PI has included um, his or her own ORCID ID here. And the affiliation. Uh, University Plus Center of uh, Wisconsin, and here's the here's the website link. And funder is of course the NIH, and this is a funding opportunity number and template, and it and the and project abstract, start date, end date, uh, last modified, and copyright information. And then copyright information is automatically created, but this part project abstract start date. And even I mean I mean from from the end uh, from title to um, last modified are um, entered by the author, and of course data type. Here are some um, subsection um, types and amount of scientific data expected to be generated in the project. And here is actually here is the uh, guideline content guideline text provided by the data by the mptour.org helping the user or the author to um, fill in the content of any subsection in this uh, data management plan. And standard, uh, the preservation access and associated timeline, access distribution or reuse considerations, oversight of data management and sharing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And this is, a, <clears throat> this is very interesting. Um, this author decided to include the planned research outputs in this data management plan. And actually, this part is not required. Well, at least I cannot find anything um, that's in the official NIH policy for DM DMSP um, asking for the inclusion of the planned research output in your DMSP. But of course, this is a decision um, made by the author. So you can choose to um, include your planned research output in your data management plan or not, of course. And, and of course, there is there is a place that you can input your planned research output in the data management in the mptour.org when we are talking about that create plan section later. And of course, this is public DMPs, and uh, this is help. And um, actually, there are a lot of content that I have included in my slides are from this part help, because in this section, almost all of the useful and helpful information has been included. Uh, in this section, um, you can read a lot of contents and helpful information about how would you want to consider when you're composing a data management plan and uh, what the dmptour.org is and some kind of uh, FAQ parts that may help you a lot when you're composing your data management plan by yourself. Okay, <clears throat> let's go to the part of create plan, which is which is a very, the most important part of dmptour.org. So first of all, <laughs> the first step, what research project are you planning? And this is, as, as you can see, with a star, a red star, which means this is a required field um, for you to fill in. So um, as usual, let's input 
the research project the title. Test project, and today is October the 4th, 2023. And on the right, you can see there is a checkbox for you to choose. Is this a mock project for you to testing or practice or some kind of educational purpose? So if I check this, there will be um, some options um, uh, be turned off like uh, persistent ID assignment. Uh, there will there will not be any persistent ID be assigned to a mock uh, data management plan. And uh, it won't give you the option to put this data management plan in public because you cannot put a data management plan for a mocking or training project in public. So since this is since this is a, a mock project or mock data management plan, I check this checkbox. And here and the second uh, field, select the primary research organization. Research organization by default, um, it is Tulsa University. Of course, you can change to any other, but I doubt you uh, in, in. But this is still a required field, unless you check this one. No research organization associated with this plan, or my research organization is not listed. If you check this one, you're allowed to change this, or you're no, if you check if you check this one, this is not a required field, not a, a, anymore. But I'm not going to check this else. And uh, but uh, I will have to yeah input it again. So select the primary funding organization. I'm going to use the NIH uh, default templates as the example here. So I'm going to key in NIH and select it from the dropdown list. And yes, you're actually, this is not a, a um, free text field. You got to key in something and then choose or pick um, the organization from the dropdown list. And of course, there's a there's also an option for you to check that if uh, there's no funder associated with this plan or my funder is not listed as well. And then of course, after you have selected your funder organization, you will have to select the template that you're going to use. So since I have selected NIH, so I am selecting NIH default VMSP. And then, of course, after all of this has been uh, input correctly, click the Create Plan button here. And then, of course, you'll be notified, successfully created a plan. And this plan is based on the National Institutes of Health, NIH.gov, NIH-the4DMSP template. And Project the title by default it is uh, from from the one that I have input from at the very beginning, and project abstract. And as you can see, this it will be included in your data management plan. So I recommend you to input this carefully, based on um, your study project. So here I'm going to test project apps correct for the DP workshop. And of course, in uh, this part, you can adjust your the format of the project abstract by clicking this one, etc. And of course, as you can see, this is press on zero or option zero for help using the reach text editor with keyboard only. So I'm not going to press Alt-0 or Option-0 because um, I don't know what will happen here. Uh, so I'm going, 
going on with this section. Research domain, this is this is the information only for your reference because this will not be showed on the final data management when you, you are composing. So I'm going to choose one, maybe for NIH, health science. And of course, let's in this part, project start and project end will be showed in your data management plan eventually. So I'm going to start on November uh, the 1st. Let's go to maybe December the 31st. And funder is NIH, of course. And of course, you still have an option uh, that you decided or you, you have found out this this funder is not your funder anymore by checking this checkbox. And of course, this part is for your reference only and will not be showed um, on your data management plan. So funding status, is it planned or has been funded or denied? So right now I am putting plan in it and uh, this is the funding opportunity number, and you you just you can copy paste it. And this is the grant number or the URL. You can also copy paste it as well. And of course, this is the selected guidance. So this this is the guidance that you choose to show on the right bar when you're when when you're in this part right plan. And of course, you can click save and click save here and it's been saved, but it will not go to the next section. So the next section is collaborator. So this in this section, two subsections are included. Number one, project contributors. Number two, DMP collaborators. You may have noticed that my email address has been included by default in this section, DMP collaborators. That's because as the data science librarian or data management plan super user in Health University, I, I will be the default DMP collaborators. So the difference between these two are your project contributors will not be your DMP collaborators by default. So in other words, all of the data management plan can be shared to with with the DMP collaborators, but will not be shared with the project contributors here. So if you want your project contributors um, to contribute or comment on the data management plan composed here, you will have to include your project contributors email address in this part, DMP collaborators. And of course, you can invite the collaborators by keying their email address and set the permissions of those collaborators that you want. You can set them as the co-owner, you can set them as editor, and you can set them as read-only. And by click sub submit, and uh, they will get notified um, from, from dmptor.org. Oh, and of course, This is the part that will be listed in your data management plan. In here. So name, email, orchid, affiliated, affiliation, and roles, etc. And the most important part of dmptour.org section, create plan, write plan. So as you can see, here is the, some subsections for you to input your content. And as you can see in this part, data type, first of all, briefly describe the scientific data to be managed, preserved, and share. And not only that, there, there's some other guide guideline here, types and amount of scientific data expected to be generated in the project. 
summarize the types and estimated amount of scientific data expected to be generated in the project. And not only that, you can still be guided by these texts that describe data in general terms at the address, the type and amount slash size of scientific data expected to be collected and used in the project, etc. Blah, blah, blah. And You, there's even some example answer here, DMP to fill in the blank prompt. This project will produce something, 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 data generated and or obtained from something, something, something. And as you may have noticed from the public or example that I showed you before, for the first of all, for the first part, all of this, has been included by default in, in the final data management plan. So somebody may, may want to delete these guidelines before they include this data management plan in their grant proposal. So as you can see, types and the describe, et cetera. And on the right, you can still have the link to the funder's official documents of the requirements. And of course, I personally will click DMP because in this part, if you click DMP, you will have something more related to the guideline about guide you, guiding you to input your content in every sub subsection, et cetera. For example, for the data description, give a summary of the data you will collect or create, noting the content, coverage and data type, uh, for example, tabular data, survey data, experimental measurements, et cetera. And data format, clearly note what formats your data will be in, for example, plain text, et cetera. So I'm going to in the test contents for data type and then click save and this content will be safe and the scientific data that will be preserved and of course this guideline will be by default included in your final data management plan as you can see here. So again, test contents for date type number two part and test date type number three, et cetera, save, et cetera. And of course, in this part, related to software and or code and uh, the guideline here is like state whether sp sp specialized tools, software, and slash code, code are needed to access or something like that. And you may have noticed that there is no dmptool.org guideline here, but it still has some NIH guideline for this part. And there are still some example answers. So take this as your guideline when you're inputting the content for this subsection. And for the standard as well, now you have the mptool.org guideline on the right, and you still have some example answers for this part as well. So is this part repository options? And by the way, data repository is another components of the research data services that I'm providing. So if you have some concerns or um, suggestions or, 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 or issues related to not only the part, this part in the data management plan, but also the data repository part for your study project, feel free to contact me. Feel free to contact me and we can have this kind of discussion specifically. And of course, for this part, you still have the guideline uh, from the top, uh, some example answers as well, and some uh, guidelines uh, from dmptool.org as well. And of course, something more. And for another part, dmptool.org, guidelines, other guidelines. You may have noticed that 
there are some difference, differences between uh, the sections guidelines. For example, we don't have the DMP tool that or let's see guidelines for this part related tools. That's because NIH is, I don't know, but I think it's the only funder that, that includes this related tool and software and code in their uh, DMSP policy. <laughs> so gener generically, DMP guideline has not included this part in, but I think maybe in the future, they will include this part specifically for the data management plan for NIH. But all other parts has this kind of guideline from DMP tool.org. And I have to say, uh, in this part, create plans for other funders like NIS, uh, NSF or DOJ, their guidelines may not like this. I mean, maybe they will only have this one paragraph like describe data and they, they, will, they will have some dmptool.org guidelines as well, but they may not have example answers. So don't take this as granted that every funders will give you example answers. The reason that we have example answers here, be, that's because NIH.gov has provided example answers for the DMSP uh, policy. So after we have done this part, let's go to the research output. And research output is a part I think only for your own reference. Of course, you can include this part in your data management plan. You, have, you will have an option and finally or eventually in the section of download, but I personally will, rec will suggest you not include this part in your data management plan because some research outputs it will be changed. And this is only your plan, the research output. And of course, some funders, some funders have the requirement of, or limitations of the pages um, for their data management plan. And by default, most of them are like more, less than two pages data management plan. So if you include this part in, we will definitely more than two pages for data management plan. But this is a very good place, I think, a very good place for you to come back to update uh, during the process of your study project, because there are a lot of options that you can choose to um, take a note for your um, possible research output. And Let's cancel this. Another request of feedback. And by default, you can you only have one option, request the expert feedback. And this is for me. Yes. And as you can see, by default, this is my name. And uh, by click by clicking this button, your data management plan will be sent to my email address with a link from which I can review your data management plan and give you comments as well. And by the way, for the DMP collaborators, if you add any anyone else in this email and invite them as your DMP collaborators, it only means that they can sign in dmptool.org or they can have the link to the data management plan to, to review to co as a co-owner or editor or read only. I highly doubt that they will receive this kind of an email address when you click this request a feedback button. And of course, finalize. In this part, if I didn't check that mock project checkbox, here, uh, no, that, that that's that's at the very beginning part that I can cannot show you, but uh, I can talk about this. Um, if I didn't check that checkbox, this button and these options will be available for you to check or for you to click. 
And finally, download section. So you can choose to download your data management plan either in a format of PDF or text, plain text or DOCX. And as you can see, you can choose to include the project details as your cover sheet, or you can choose not, and you can choose to include the question text or not, and you can choose to include a section headings or not, and something like that. And you can choose to include any unanswered questions or not, because some sometimes you, you may find in the public uh, data management plans, there, there are some kind of a blank section with the, the questions unanswered. So this is just a briefly introduction of how to use dmptool.org to, to compose your data management plan. And uh, there, of course, there are more that we can talk about based on different cases specifically. And feel free to contact me if you need any suggestions or um, any discussions that you need for your data management plan. And now let's go back to my presentation, uh, which may, yeah. And of course, this is uh, some briefly um, content uh, for your reference. For a good data management plan, something that uh, something that's um, required to be included in your consideration when you're composing um, your data management plan. So I'm going to go through this very quickly without any explanations because those are some um, these are some explanations that you can enclose later. And uh, yes, uh, there are some kind of uh, contents about data citation as well. Some kind of uh, contents of copyright and privacy as well. And then I'm going to briefly introduce something, the research data services. Um, other than the, the data management plan as well. So research data services are services that uh, I'm not going to read this. Uh, and here is, here is the source that, that I find this definition. And actually there is no clear or official definition of a research data services. I choose this one as the definition of my research data services because I found this is this is the one that can, the one that describe, described the content or components of my research data services uh, correctly. And then this is some categories of the research data services as well. And through different methods, um, I am providing these categories of the, the, the data services, data management plans, data analysis, visualization, data sets, repository as well. And there are some cases showing, I'm not going to show this report, but uh, you can, uh, you're welcome, more than welcome to click this link to go to my Power BI report to view the current situation of the research data services uh, that I have handled and am handling. And this is a briefly looking um, at the data studio, a place that on the second floor in the Cook Library providing five computers with these applications installed as well. And this is a newly developed web page to tell you what and how uh, the, the scholarly research services items are provided. Um, here, is the here is the part of my um, research data services and we are still providing the services of uh, publishing, the services of uh, scholarly impact, ORCID, research metrics, library events, and digital research posters, and some open journals, copyright and open licenses as well. So 
right now it's almost almost 11 o'clock and uh, finally I'm providing the links to the research guides that uh, I created um, and maintained for, for your reference. And thank you everyone to uh, attend uh, my workshop and watch my video um, afterward. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me via email, etc. And thank you. Goodbye.